Annie Nightingale, and I'm best known as a broadcaster and DJ. When I took over presenting the Old Grey Whistle Test in 1978, I felt it was crying out for a new kind of music. I wanted it to be more of a platform for young people to have their say, but would they want to be on this very rock show? This was a revolutionary time in both music and the country, and we needed to reflect what was happening. A youth culture glaringly missing on the mainstream media. I've prized open the archive on this era, and this is my personal look at some of the finest and most intriguing moments from that time. I felt it was time for a revolution. There was an uprising. It was called punk. Punk was critical and nihilistic, and the songs were angry, reflecting the social upheaval of the times. Smash it up and I just can't be happy today. In the 70s and early 80s, there was probably a greater variety of music being created than during any other decade. Reggae, disco, ska, glam rock, later on electronica and prog rock, which took it to the realms of the ridiculous and did not speak to a dissatisfied generation. We didn't want any more overblown guitar solos, drum solos, or rock shows on ice. A great change needed to happen. The roots of this non-glittery pop had come from the US. Dodd's 1973 controversial appearance on the Old Grey Whistle Test made an impact on a generation of young proto-punks. 
There were echoes of 50s doo up in there with the drop dead, don't care attitude of guitarist Johnny Thunders and co. They were killer. We were now in a cut-up DIY world. But it would be some time before punk was featured on the BBC. John Peel on Radio 1 was their champion, and me where I could. The whistle test was seen as anti-punk, and when I came on board, all I wanted to do was get some of the most significant artists on the show. Welcome to Whistle Test. I'm Anne Nightingale from Austerley. And on Two years at the very least after punk had impacted in the UK, I finally got my chance with the adverts. At last, the 1978 show. One, two, three, four. We took it into corners, finding ways to fill the vacuum. I almost had to smuggle them in, this young band. And though I'm as a drive, we talk it home to hit on something new. Tied throwing tracks is one way to revive, but no way to relax. We're just four teenagers. Look at us, just say emotional rages. Four teenagers, seen ourselves as strangers. The adverts were from Devon and London and led by TV Smith and the female bass player, Gay Advert, who attracted a lot of attention. Not always welcomed. Among others, there was one band in particular I and the newly inspired producers of the show were keen to get on the old grey whistle test. They're here with us tonight to play two tracks from it. Firstly, Metal Postcard, Susie and the Banshees. impressed me was that Susie launched her career by singing the Lord's Prayer at the 100 Club on Oxford Street. Evolving everywhere. Manchester, Sheffield, Coventry, Liverpool, and Belfast.
Scotland too was producing vivid punk pop. Zillows, originally formed in Edinburgh, got themselves to the revered Power Station studio in New York to record their first album. They played a gig at CBGB's, the extended bar that was the epicenter of the New York punk and new wave scene. Destination While punks and new wave acts from the US scene were finding an enthusiastic audience in the UK, it was a revelation. I'm sick. I'm sick of all my kids. I'm sick of all the stiffs. Sick of all the dips. I'm bored. Iggy Pop from Michigan took performance to a different level. His unique persona had begun with the Stooges. Their first album was produced by John Cale of the Velvet Underground. I'm bored. Bored. All right, Dalface. Come on and bore me. No Iggy, no punk. He was the creator. David Bowie zoomed in on him brought him to a wider audience and big recognition. There was the visually and sonically so innovative Devo from Akron, Ohio. We are Devo, are we not men? Devo, are we not men? We are Devo, are we not men? Devo. David Bowie would refer to Devo as the band of the future when he first heard them. I told him he was the future when Space Odyssey first came out. I know people who have named their children after members of the Ramones. Such is their continuing influence. The Ramones' tunes were short, sharp, and to the point, and they had a defined, unified look. Wow. 
when me just come to London town, me used to work on the underground. But working on the underground, you don't get to know your way around. England is a bitch. There's no escape in it. England is a bitch. There's no running away from it. Me get a little job in a big hotel, and after a while, me was doing quite well. Them start me off as a dishwasher, but when me take a stock, me not turn clock watcher. England is a bitch. There's no escape in it. England is a bitch. Whereas the US artists were not so openly political, the British punks were unafraid of taking on any subject. One of the Sex Pistols' most notorious moments was to play aboard a boat on the Thames outside the Houses of Parliament to publicise their track, God Save the Queen, during the monarch's Silver Jubilee. Polystyrene was inspired to start X-Ray Specs after going to an early Sex Pistols gig. Styrene was by no means the lone female voice. Along with other defiant ones, females were empowered by punk. From the Slits to the Au Pairs to Annie Lennox in The Tourists and Lena Lovitch. Also, the raincoats who formed while students at Hornsey Art College. And there was Rachel Sweet, an American who signed with UK label Stiff. Smith also emerged from New York's underground scene. Patty's youth was a living hell of extreme hardship before her passion as a poet and a performer came shining through.
In the UK, independent record labels were springing up everywhere. Manchester's Factory Records signed Joy Division. The longest lasting legacy came from the short life of lead singer Ian Curtis. The music was a bleak expression of hard times, yet shimmeringly, exquisitely beautiful, reflecting emotion like no other band of the time. So to the latest outrage from Stiff, never a record company to go from A to B when they could take the pretty route. They have hired a British Rail exhibition special train for their latest B Stiff tour. Our show featured the tour in 1978 of stars of the always innovative, cheeky label Stiff Records. Reckless Eric, and also on that tour, Ian Dury. Who introduced me to Reckless Eric's parents? Reckless Dorothy and Reckless Frank. Movements such as the National Front had gained momentum in the 70s, resulting in violent clashes with protesters. This marked the point where music and activism came together to fight the looming threat of neo-fascism. These so influential clash were at the forefront.
tone, the Coventry label emerged with bands that commentated with uncanny prescience. This was a genuine DIY enterprise. Jerry Dammers began two-tone in his living room, and the musical relevance of the two-tone bands reverberates to this day. Among them, Madness, The Specials, The Beat, Rhoda, and The Selector. And are going to play a couple of tracks from Metalbox, Public Image Limited. After the demise of the Sex Pistols, Johnny Rotten, now using his own name, John Lydon, put together Public Image Limited, and I introduced them on the old grey whistle test. Intense live performance was one of the most powerful on the show. As I commented to John Lydon afterwards, don't be so fucking patronizing, was his not unexpected response. But finally, after half an hour, I convinced him that I meant what I'd said. For the rest of the night, he bought the crew drinks all round. Left a hole in the back of my head. I don't like hiding in this foliage and hate it. By now, a new Prime Minister was in number 10. Would Margaret Thatcher bring the country out of the doldrums? I've always bigged up exciting new bands and musicians wherever possible. I'd followed Ian Dury and the Blockheads since their early days, a fabulous combination of the wittiest punk frontman with the tightest funk band in the land. I wouldn't need to worry. I could be a teacher in a classroom full of scholars. I could be the sergeant in a squadron full of wallers. What a waste. What a waste. What a waste. What a waste. Shows a great fool in a nine piece band. First nine nerves, every one night stand. I should be glad to be so inclined. What a waste. What a waste. Rock and roll, no Ian's poetic lyrics live on in our lexicon. 
his caustic song, Spasticus Autisticus, about disabilities, was once considered unsuitable for daytime radio play. But he was vindicated. The song opened the 2012 London Paralympics. What a way. There was an electronic revolution on the horizon, having been inspired from years back by the likes of Can and Kraftwerk. Anderson, a performance artist from New York, captivated with her eerie take using her own synthesized voice for Oh Superman. It was a smash hit too. Oh, mom and dad. Mom and dad. Uh, 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 uh. First time I heard it on my car radio, I was absolutely transfixed. Hi, I'm not home right now, but if you want to leave a message, just start talking at the sound of your tone. Hello? This is your mother. Are you there? Are you coming home? Anybody home? Well, you don't know me, but I know you, and I'm gonna sing to give to you. There was little more inspiring and exciting for me than witnessing a huge new talent appearing on the show. Soft Cell was just that. Mark Armand was at Leeds Polytechnic. He teamed up with fellow student Dave Ball, a technological and musical wizard the perfect synth duo. Massive hits followed. Mark Armand's voice, a true torch singer from the get-go, soared like a bird that no cage could ever contain. delighted to introduce you to Paul Humphreys on keyboards, Andy McCluskey on bass with Dave Hughes also on keyboards and Malcolm Holmes on drums. I was also going to be very delighted to introduce you to Winston, the four track TX star member of the band but apparently he's gone to the great recording studio in the sky, orchestral manoeuvres. and Andy McCluskey as OMD, 
orchestral manoeuvres in the dark, combined their electronic powers with writing haunting songs about everything from telephone boxes to the atomic bomb. Gary Newman's first performance on the old Grey Whistle Test was vividly memorable for me and everyone who's... There's no doubt about the fool's authenticity. My heart's an eye agree. They were led by Mark E. Smith from Salford. Maddening, eccentric, unique. He did more appeal sessions than anyone. 66 different people were rumored to be in the fall at different times. Some didn't last long. Some even wrote books about the experience. Debbie Harry was an aspiring artist on New York's Lower East Side. Was it destiny? She was part of the avant-garde scene that centred around Andy Warhol and Lou Reed. Here, Debbie met guitarist Chris Stein, and Blondie was born. It was the introduction of pop producer Mike Chapman that changed Blondie's fortunes. Somehow, they retained their cool punk credentials, even after Chapman turned them into a monster hit machine. sessions and the old grey whistle test would feature any number of underground acts. Many punk bands cast long shadows, their reputation far greater after they'd split up. The Au Pairs from Birmingham lasted a few short years till 1983, yet were a big influence on the rock girl feminist movement of the 90s and onwards. I cannot over 
overstate the impact of the Gang of Four. This Leeds outfit skillfully married provocative lyrics with fearless funk. They would go on to influence future international names such as R.E.M. and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. When the music mutated into a less formidable new wave, this was a green light for some groups. One in particular were an unlikely trio, a drummer whose dad had been in the CIA, a Geordie X teacher and a seasoned guitarist. This tight unit made up the police. Soon they were off around the world and I went with them to make a film. They had the tunes to make pop hits. And with Shea Graf, he was a band who set out for world domination and got it. The groupies here are incredibly organized. They will meet the police if they're arriving by train, they will be at the station. They have the taxi ready to follow the van to its hotel. They have rooms booked in the hotel. Diversity kept the old grey whistle test exciting. On the live stages every week were a spectrum of future pop stars and the bizarrest deep underground players in the same show. I mean, there's a lot of vulgar jokes in Britain about people having to wear funny clothes in order to sing for No, no, Is not this at true? all. No, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. It's, it comes naturally to you with no problem. It's very natural to me, of course. Every boy wants a girl. He can cross to the very end. Baby, that's you. Won't you stay? But till then, when I begging to be kissed. I can't stop, stop. I can't stop myself. No. A new romantic band from Birmingham made their debut on the old grey whistle test. Shudder away, I 
reflected the coming sound of white soul funk with added scarves and were glossy image ready for what was on the horizon. There was about to be a new evolution in music marketing, the video, and with it a channel that would be playing these adverts for the bands wall to wall. Video was a new canvas for artists too. I'm the shy boy, you're the coy boy, and you know what homo sapien too. I'm the cruiser, you're the loser. Pete Shelley, previously of the Buzzcocks, appeared in a video for his first solo single that looked, well, MTV-esque. Then risque lyrics were noticed. Didn't stop me playing it on my radio show. And the world's built a dangerous stage where we act our lives. And the words in the scripts interfit, except we have some surprise. I just want this to last for my future is past all gone. And if this is the case, then I'll Punk bands, videos or not, there was still plenty to shout about in the 1980s. The punk movement changed music forever. It gave individuals freedom, and there was another revolution going on too. You could now create sounds no one had ever heard before. Punk really caught fire again when another movement I embraced enthusiastically the underground rave scene erupted. For some, rave was more punk than punk. Finally, an iconic punk moment taken from a Julian Temple film. The outrageous takedown by Sid Vicious of My Way. His Way. Oh, no. And every highway 